Hello, my darlings. Before we go right into the regular intro part, this is a Todoroki story that I've come up with on the spot, mostly because I realized, oh crap, I forgot to upload something yesterday. So I still hope you enjoy it. But as I said, before I dive right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end. Like or dislike and comment something down below. That would really help me out as this advances me a little bit in the YouTube algorithm. And the higher my standing in the YouTube algorithm, the more people get my videos recommended. Uh, this is primarily because I get a lot of comments telling me that I'm underrated. And if you do that, well, eventually I won't be underrated anymore. So remember, watch the video until the end, like or dislike, comment anything you think might be an entertaining comment down below. I read all of the comments, just don't always reply to them, and maybe share the videos around. And what also always helps is drawing fan art and linking them to my videos. I'm even okay with Rule 34. You can draw me in porn if you want. I don't care. In fact, I would probably enjoy it. Anyways, let's get right into the show, shall we? Paperwork. An important part of your job. But it was also the safest. You were sitting in your office cubicle in the police department, signing letters, stamping forms, and making little crosses in the right squares. Occasionally, you filled out reports, edited them, or corrected spelling mistakes. While frowned upon, you were glad that this was your job. You weren't risking any societal pushback by arresting a person with a mutation quirk, and you were completely safe from any marauding villain. That was until your boss, Commissioner Hayato, left his personal office with a deep scowl, facing you and your colleagues. He coughed loudly to get everyone's attention. We have just received a call from our boys at the Cabina Ward Mall. A mutant went on a rampage, and he didn't survive the arrest. A cold shower washed over you. Worst of all, a pro hero caused a lot of collateral damage. I don't say this lightly, but there are a lot of things that need filling and filing if we don't want a complete meltdown in the media and reduction our budget. Overtime was the only word floating around in your head. Do your best. We don't want a repeat of the stain crap. Hayato scoffed. <laughs> Deifying a criminal. What's wrong with this country? After these words, the commissioner retreated back into his office. The man was hardworking, and you knew he'd only leave after everyone else had already left. Mere seconds after, the phones in the department blew up. Orders were shouted, and the noises of flying papers filled the room. It was an orderly chaos. Something you had went through many times. But today really was bad timing. It was the anniversary of your wedding to the pro hero Shoto Todoroki. You two had made plans. He pulled a few strings to organize a private party just you and him, in a prestigious sushi restaurant run by the culinary hero Kitchen Nightmare. You sighed. Why did it have to be a mutation quirk user? That alone doubled the paperwork. Meanwhile, Todoroki sighed and leaned into the leather couch inside of his study. He had just called off the arranged private event after you called him. Dealing with the enraged yet understanding chef hero was one thing. The other thing was that an occasion like this had been ruined by outside means. The trauma from his father failed. The trauma from his parents' failed marriage had made him soft. Shoto showed only the greatest generosity towards you 
and any failing in your marriage he made himself responsible for, be it you being a little upset during your time of the month, or that one time he forgot to buy you flowers before a date. You weren't even upset at him for it. Which led to both of you profusely apologizing. For... You for not being upset, and him for being, as he put it, just like his father. How he turned this disaster on himself? Well, he made himself believe that him not taking part in the battle with the villain made things escalate this way. Ignoring the fact that Shoto didn't even knew this happened up until you called ten minutes ago. The man played around with his wedding ring, until an idea came to him. He got up and left his study. If you couldn't enjoy the fine dining he had planned, you could at least enjoy a meal cooked with heart. That was something meaningful, right? He had to admit, even after your five-year-long relationship and your one year of being married, he still only had a somewhat shallow grasp on romance. What he knew came from video games and movies. Which meant that gifts and compliments were all he was capable of and confident enough in doing. <laughs> Too bad he sucked at cooking. It was 4 a.m. The sun already rising from the horizon when you opened the door to your home. It was a decently sized apartment inside of a luxurious complex. It even had a pool on the roof. Essentially, your apartment consisted of one really big living room with every other part attached. A study, a kitchen, a bathroom, and two bedrooms. Since one was unused, you had turned it into the pet room. Which meant it was covered with a thin layer of straw, a few pee-pee boxes, and two small tubs of dry food for three very, very happy bunnies. You walked on wobbly legs, too tired to walk properly. Your eyes had problems staying focused, too much staring on letters and numbers. How you managed not to crash your car during your drive home was a miracle. Strange. The lights in the living room were still on. With your hands you rubbed over your face, finally able to properly process the images you were seeing. The living room was freshly cleaned. Yawning, you stumbled towards your bedroom when suddenly you heard a pot crash. You blinked in confusion, forcing your brain to work through the information you were receiving. And slowly, you began to approach the kitchen. The door was slightly ajar, and you peeked inside. Your husband was hunched over at the kitchen table, snoring. Looking over the chaos he left behind, you looked over the chaos he left behind, including a small pot filled with red sauce lying on the ground right next to Todoroki's hovering hand. He must have been holding it before he passed out, and dropped it in his sleep. The kitchen itself was dirty. Cut up vegetable pieces, spilled sauce, and burned things stuck inside of pans. Then you noticed the big baking sheet in front of the sleeping man. Cautiously you approached. On the sheet was a perfectly looking lasagna. Knowing full well the lack of culinary ability of Todoroki, you poked the dish lightly and then sucked off the sauce from your finger. It was spicy. Too spicy. He must have mistaken the paprika powder with the chili powder. 
You smirked and it tangled sharply. You loved this man. At least it wasn't poison. Or, well, you couldn't tell if it was poisonous. Clearly a step down from the planned sushi, but... Come on. He made it himself with heart. And you had a hard time already, you thought. Resigning yourself to your fate, you grabbed a knife, cut out a square of the noodle dish, before sitting down at the table in front of your husband. Quietly, you chowed down. The noodle plates were overcooked, the sauce too runny, and the meat very dry. But you had to admit, it was the best dish he ever made. If the kitchen wasn't in this poor state, you'd even call it good. Just to make him happy, of course. I... I love you. He mumbled in his sleep. Okay, maybe, just maybe you could ignore the chaotic kitchen. Thanks. I work hard on it. You grinned. He must have been somewhat aware of his surroundings. You bit your lower lip to suppress bursting into laughter. For a moment you considered recording his delirious ramblings to tease him in the future. But that would ruin this little moment. Smiling, you stood up, sneaking over to him. Slowly, you lowered your head towards his ear and whispered, I love you too.